بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ہوپ یو اینڈ یور فیملی ویل اینڈ سیف ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹ دس لیکچر از فور گریٹ ٹین بوائز اینڈ گرلز بوتھ ونگ سبجیکٹ کیمسٹری چیپٹر نمبر ٹویلو ایکسرسائز دس از مائی ٹوینٹی ایتھ لیکچر اینڈ ہیئر از یور لیکچر آر مسز سائرہ جمار In this lecture, we are going to discuss the exercise of chapter number 12. Question number one is MCQs. In circle, the correct answer. MCQ number one is which molecule contains a carbon-carbon double bond? Which molecule contain a carbon-carbon double bond? So you know that in case of ethane, ethene, ethyne, so it means there are two carbon atoms. It means the carbon atoms are two. And you know that in case of ethane, the carbon-carbon bonds are single bonds, while in case of ethene, the carbon-carbon bonds are double bonds. and the rest of the valency or the bonds will be satisfied by joining two hydrogen atoms with each carbon atom. So you can see that the valency of each carbon atom, the double bonded carbon atom can be satisfied by joining two hydrogen atoms with each carbon atoms. By this way, the valency of each carbon atom will be satisfied. So which molecule contains a carbon-carbon double bond? The correct option is ethene. Ethene molecule contains a carbon-carbon double bond. MCQ number two is which product is obtained when chloromethane is reduced? Chloromethane. Chloromethane is CH3 having a chlorine attached with it. This is called chloromethane and chloromethane is when reduced reduction of chloromethane. It will give us Uh, this must be chloromethane. Uh, so definitely, how can it give us ethane? Reduction means addition of hydrogen. When hydrogen is added up in chloromethane, like in place of uh, chlorine, when hydrogen will add up to this molecule, so what will be the product? Is the product Uh, an alkane to uh, ethane. How is it possible? Chloromethane has one carbon atom only. So how can it give uh, ethane? Second one is the uh, ethene. Again, two carbon, not possible. Methane, yes, methane is possible because uh, we have, methane also have only one carbon atom. So this reduction of uh, methyl chloride, if you remember, we discussed it in the topic of preparation of alkanes from uh, by the reduction of alkyl halides, where we use the nascent hydrogen. Nascent hydrogen, I told you, means atomic hydrogen. When methyl chloride react with nascent hydrogen, or with atomic hydrogens and from where that nascent hydrogen or atomic hydrogen come it comes from the reaction of zinc with acid zinc with an acid that may be hydrochloric acid or any acid we can use so the reduction of zinc or first the reaction of zinc with HCl will liberate atomic hydrogen and this atomic hydrogen when react with methyl chloride will reduce methyl chloride and it will give us the reduction product or the reduced product that is 
methane. The reduced product will be methane and that's why we can say methane and also the side product form will be the uh, hydrogen and chlorine that will be hydrochloric acid it means hcl is regenerated in this reaction so what is the correct option correct option is reduction of uh, methyl chloride or alkyl halide in the presence of uh, zinc and hcl will give us methane the product form will be methane methyl chloride will reduce and will give the product methane that this reaction is called the reduction of uh, methyl chloride or the reduction of uh, um, alkyl halide not only for methyl chloride we can use the same for any uh, alkyl halide as well mcq number three which reacts explosively with methane explosively means the reaction is very fast with a very fast reaction or very rapid reaction so definitely if you remember i told you in the lecture that uh, in all the halogen family fluorine react explosively with methane so the correct option is uh, fluorine fluorine react with methane explosively the fourth one is by dehydration we mean the removal of hydration hydrate means water so it's understood that dehydration means the removal of water dehydration means the removal of water is called dehydration. MCQ number five, ethene and ethane can be differentiated by, definitely we have different tests for the differentiation of ethene and ethane. Although ethene and ethane both are unsaturated hydrocarbons and we have two important tests for their identification. One is called bromine water test and second one is called Byers test. Byers test is actually the reaction of uh, alkene or alkyne with the uh, aqueous solution of potassium permanganate. But the difference is that for the ethene, we use dilute alkaline aqueous solution of potassium permanganate. But for al uh, alkyne or ethene, we use concentrated alkaline solution of uh, aqueous solution of potassium permanganate. So the correct option is dilute alkaline aqueous solution of potassium permanganate can differentiate between ethene and ethene because ethene reacts with dilute um, alkaline aqueous solution of potassium permanganate while ethene only reacts with concentrated alkaline aqueous solution of potassium permanganate. So C is the correct option. Number six, which is used for dehydrohalogenation. Dehydrohalogenation means hydrogen, removal of hydrogen or elimination of hydrogen from one carbon atom and halogen from the second carbon atom. Uh, and then in turn the two carbon atom will make a double bond. So that process takes place in the presence of alcoholic potassium hydroxide. Uh, the halogen will eliminate with potassium and will give potassium chloride and hydrogen with hydrogen group to form water. Number seven is which one of the following will react with potassium permanganate to produce oxalic acid. So the reaction with potassium permanganate I told you is a Byers test but both the unsaturated hydrocarbons like ethene and ethane they give this uh, test which is called Bayer test and this is a test of uh, you can say unsaturation so uh, if you remember we discussed in the chapter that uh, ethene react with potassium permanganate alkaline potassium permanganate dilute alkaline potassium permanganate and will form uh, or, or will give ethylene glycol but ethane when react with potassium permanganate the final product is uh, oxalic acid so the correct option is ethane 
when react with potassium permanganate or alkaline potassium permanganate will give us ethyl. The reduction of alkyl halide takes place in the presence of, we have done this in case of the reduction of methyl chloride uh, to give methane, that was the first uh, MCQ. So definitely this reduction will take place in the presence of zinc and hydrochloric acid because zinc and hydrochloric acid will provide the uh, nascent uh, hydrogen for the reduction uh, process. Now coming towards the uh, MCQs, that is question number two, uh, sorry, after MCQs, coming toward the second question, question number two, that is about the short question answers. Short question answer number one is give three examples of unsaturated hydrocarbons. I told you that unsaturated hydrocarbon means that uh, those hydrocarbons which contain multiple bonds, carbon-carbon double bond and carbon-carbon triple bond. Carbon-carbon double bonded compounds are called alkenes and carbon-carbon triple bonds are called um, alkynes. So what are hydrocarbons? Hydrocarbons, uh, what are unsaturated hydrocarbon? Hydrocarbons containing carbon-carbon multiple bonds are called unsaturated hydrocarbons and uh, there are two types, alkenes and alkynes. I told you that the double bonded compounds are called Alkenes and the triple bonded compounds are called alkynes. Examples of alkenes and alkynes are the first example is ethene. Ethene. This is for alkenes first because you can see in all these three cases the bonds are carbon carbon double bonds. So, first example is ethene, uh, which is also called ethylene. The formula is C2H4. You can see two carbon atoms and four hydrogen atoms and the bond is double bond. So for two carbon atoms, it and for double bond, e, it, e. And the, the second example is for the three carbon containing alkene. So for three carbon prop and a double bond, so in propene and common name is propylene. We can also call it propylene and formula is the C3. H6 and you can see in this case one carbon is uh, in one carbon increases from two it become three and two hydrogen atom uh, number increases from four it become six and double bonds are present here uh, you can also make it uh, over here uh, it, it will be same because that carbon will count as the first carbon atom where the double bond will be closest. So in this case, this is my carbon number one because double bond is present at left side or at this carbon atom. Third example is for butene, but for four carbon atom and in I told you for double bond. So you can see butene and the name of butene will vary depending on the position of the double bond. Like this is one butene because double bond is present at carbon number one. If double bond uh, will here, then we will call a two butene. Okay, one butene, two butene, depending upon the position of double bond. Either it is present between carbon number one and two, or two and three. Examples of alkynes. Uh, three examples of alkynes are uh, alkynes. I told you are those hydrocarbons which contain at least one carbon-carbon triple bond. So the first example is ethane. Again, it for two carbon atoms is an ion means a triple bond is there. So the first example is for ethane. Uh, second example is propyne. Uh, again, you can see one carbon number increases and two hydrogen atoms. Uh, same is the case here, one carbon and two hydrogen atoms. So each uh, ethane uh, member differ by CH2 group, which is also called methylene group. Methylene group or CH2 group each uh, member of the alkyne family or of alkene family or even alkane family that differ by CH2 group is also called methylene group. So this is the ethane and this one is carbon carbon. Uh, there are three carbon atoms present. Uh, so this is called propyne and in the third example 
one, two, three, four. Four carbon atoms are present, and the double or triple bond is at carbon number one. So the name of this compound is one butyne. Uh, if the triple bond to, uh, will be at second carbon atom, then the name of that compound will be two butyne. But in this case, it is one butyne. So these are the three examples of uh, alkenes and alkyne groups. Question number two, draw electron dot and cross structure of ethene. So we can draw electron dot and cross structure of ethene like by this way. Uh, these are two carbon atoms and the two carbon atoms share uh, two to electron pairs. Total four electrons are there and the, the rest of the two uh, electrons, the carbon will share with two hydrogen atoms. So the electrons of carbon uh, we mentioned by cross crosses and those of the hydrogen atom by dots. So you can see that the carbon atoms are joined to uh, four electron pairs by sharing two electron pairs or total four electrons. And uh, with hydrogen, each carbon uh, shared one one electron. So uh, the carbon will make single covalent bond with each hydrogen atom and with uh, carbon atom they will form a double covalent bond with each other. So this is uh, one of the form of making electron dot and cross structure of uh, ethene. We can also uh, draw the electron dot and cross structure of ethene by this way, uh, like by putting the dots. Uh, the, in this case the dots are for carbon, uh, the dots are of carbon electrons and crosses are electrons of the hydrogen atoms. So they will share the two electron pairs or four electrons and the remaining two, two electrons, um, remaining uh, two electrons, it will share with two hydrogen atoms. Each carbon will share with two hydrogen atoms. So then in turn, this is the final structure of ethene, having carbon-carbon double bond in in between the two carbon atoms and single bond with uh, two hydrogen atoms. So total uh, number of carbon atoms in ethene are two carbon atoms and four hydrogen atoms. Question number three is give structure formulas of an alkane, alkene and alkyne containing five carbon atoms. Like we have to make five, carb five carbon containing alkane, alkene and alkyne. The first one is alkane and as it is five carbon containing alkane so for five carbon atom we will use the term pent. Pent means five and n all the carbon carbon bonds will be single bond. So you can see uh, first of all we have to find out that in pentane and uh, it is clear from the name that it contains five carbon atom but how many hydrogen atoms uh, are required so we will use the general formula of alkanes that is Cn H2n plus 2. So as the value of n is 5, so we will write 5, then 2 into 5 plus 2 will give us the answer 12. It means hydrogen required are 2. Let us draw the structure. We have 5 uh, carbon atoms. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And hydrogen atom required are 12. And all the bonds will be a single covalent bond because alkanes contain all carbon-carbon single bond. Let us count the hydrogen atoms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is the correct structure of pentane, pent 5 carbon atoms and 12 hydrogen atoms and all the bonds are carbon-carbon single bonds. Second structure we have to draw for alkenes and in this case again for five pent but as there there like uh, there must be at least one double bond for in in for carbon carbon at least one carbon carbon double bond. Now uh, carbons are again clear five carbon atom but how many hydrogens are required? So the number of hydrogen atom we will find out by using the general formula of alkene which is C and H2N. And uh, if you remember, I told you before that uh, 
uh, the alkenes are two hydrogen atom less than alkanes. So in case of alkane, we have the formula C5H12, but for alkene, now the formula is C5H10. So alkenes are two hydrogen atom less than uh, alkanes. Structure you can see uh, as the double bond is present at carbon number one. So the name of this uh, uh, alkene is one pentene because double bond is present at carbon number one. If the double bond will be here at carbon number two, then the name of this compound will be two pentene. Okay, and if it is at carbon number three, then the name will be three pentene. So the name of the uh, pentene, one, two, three, depending upon the position of the carbon-carbon uh, double bond, that either it is at carbon number one, a two, or three. For alkyne, uh, again, pent for five and ion for carbon-carbon triple bond, that these hydrocarbons contain at least one carbon-carbon triple bond. And uh, how many hydrogen atoms are required? We do the general formula of alkynes, which is uh, CnH2n minus 2 by putting the n value, which is uh, C5, uh, 2, 5 minus 2. Now you can see that uh, alkynes are two hydrogen atoms less than alkene. In alkenes, alkenes, the number of hydrogen atoms were 10. But in alkyne, the number of hydrogen atoms are eight. So alkynes are two hydrogen atoms less than alkenes, but four hydrogen atoms less than alkyne because in alkyne, hydrogen atoms were 12. And uh, alkane, sorry, hydrogen atoms were 12. And in alkenes, uh, they were 10. And in alkyne, they are eight. So alkenes are two hydrogen atoms less than alkane and alkynes are four hydrogen atom less than alkane and two hydrogen atom less than alkenes. Structure of uh, alkyne, uh, in this case you can see one, two, three, four, five, five carbon atoms are there and hydrogen atoms I told you must be eight. So let us count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. So, a uh, number of hydrogen atoms are eight, and the name of the alkyne is two pentyne because the double a triple bond is present at carbon number two. I told you that according to IOPAC rule, you have to start counting from that side where the triple bond is closest. If I will start counting from this side, then the triple bond will come at carbon number three. See, one, two, three. That is uh, not according to IOPEC rule. But if I will start it from the left side, one, two, carbon number two has triple bond. So this is the correct way to count it from the left side because the triple bond comes closest at the left side. So this is one and two. So the name of the compound is two pentine. And if it will present at this position, again, that will be two because at that time I will start counting from this side, one and two. Question number four, how can you differentiate ethane from ethyne? So you know that we have a special type of test which is called uh, bromine water test. Bromine water test we will use to differentiate between ethane from uh, ethane because ethane is saturated hydrocarbon and ethane is unsaturated hydrocarbon. And if you remember, I told you during the lectures that um, we, we have two types of tests for uh, identification of uh, saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbon. Those two tests were bromine water test and Bayer test. So uh, Bayer test is actually we will use mostly it for differentiation between ethene and ethyne. So uh, like that side we are going to discuss only the one bromine water test for differentiation of saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbon. Add a small amount of bromine water to two or each jar. Suppose if you have two jar, one has a saturated hydrocarbon, ethane, and the other jar has ethane, unsaturated hydrocarbon. We will add bromine in each jar. Shake the jar containing ethene will, um, with this uh, bromine water by adding bromine water in it. So you will see that the color of the bromine 
uh, will discharge when you will add it in ethene and uh, the other gel which contain ethane or saturated hydrocarbon nothing will happen to the color of bromine water the bromine water color remain brown so this is because the bromine will add on uh, across the carbon carbon double bond of the unsaturated ethene and uh, it will convert it into dibromo uh, ethane so the bromine is removed from the water which becomes uh, clear or the decolorization of bromine water will takes place but in case of ethane it is already saturated so no reaction will occur that's why the bromine of uh, the brown color of bromine will persist and nothing will happen to it the reaction as you can see addition reaction take place this bond will breaks up one bromine will add to this carbon atom and one to this carbon atom so we have dibromo ethane one uh, two dibromo ethane you can see here one uh, test tube contain alkane and the second test tube has alkene in it by adding bromine water in it the alkane uh, color uh, of bromine water in alkane remain brown nothing happened to it while in case of alkene the color of this uh, bromine water get decolorized or transparent it means that this alkene has reacted with the bromine and will form one to dibromo ethane because the double bond is now converted into single bond or unsaturated compound is converted into saturated compound question number five what do you mean by dehydration reactions so dehydration has from the name indicated loss of water or removal of water and uh, you know that uh, this was one of the matter for the preparation of alkenes from dehydration of alcohol if you remember so dehydration actually means loss of water alcohol dehydrate when the vapors are passed over heated alumina and uh, we can also use phosphoric acid and phosphorus pentaoxide uh, as a dehydrating agent they can also remove water and from alcohol and we can also use concentrated sulfuric acid as a dehydrating agent or for the removal of water from alcohol to give us alkenes the reaction you can see that alcohol after dehydration uh, the product will uh, the product which we get is ethene that is an alkene and the reaction takes place in the presence of alumina and heated means at high temperature it, the water will eliminate out and uh, if you if you will use concentrated sulfuric acid we can also use concentrated sulfuric acid as a dehydrating agent but we can see that the temperature in this case is low at 140 to 170 degrees centigrade the reaction that takes place at low temperature if you will use concentrated sulfuric acid as a dehydrating agent then it will give us this product so dear students i hope uh, you will understand this lecture uh, inshallah the other questions of the exercise we will do in our next lecture till then take care allah